you shouting out some gratitude this month? Because that's what we're all about, right? Mm -hmm. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we have been having quite the fun time this month. That's right. Oh, wow. I hope you guys are hanging your megaphone. Hangers up. I know, like, some of you have post-its, right? And you're writing something that's awesome that God's what? doing. Yeah. Every cool day. stuff. You know, and then I, I didn't have these post-its, you know? So I just, like, cut out pictures of things that remind me of how thankful I am to God. Uh -huh. I really like daisies. I'm so thankful when I see daisies. And then, like, oh, and girlfriends. And then books. I love books. Yeah. Yeah, and you hang books it in your house. Awesome. And it reminds you to be grateful. Yeah. It works out good, huh? Awesome. I so I hope you guys are doing this at home, right? You got a whole month of gratitude to hang these megaphone things. All right. But, you know what? I have a question, though, before we go any Okay, further. sure. Yeah, I was going to ask you, but I'm going to ask them instead. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever gotten hurt before? You know, like broke a bone or like bonked your head oh. or, you know, boo boo? Yeah, I'm sure you guys have all. I mean, everybody's been hurt at some point. I, mean, I, I got hurt just last week. I got a little boo-boo on my thumb, and then when I was trying to use the remote, it hurt every time I changed the channel, and it was so sad. So sad. It's better now, though. Oh, uh, okay. Well, you know, uh, I too, when I was a kid, I got hurt. I, I went to camp, and I ran out on a wet floor, and boom, broke my wrist. Oh. Yeah, I was really thankful there was people there to help. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I thought, you know, people are helping. I don't want to do that. In fact, that's why I became a nurse. I'm uh -huh. very good at helping mm -hmm. up. So you enjoy it. I do. And that's what you get to do. Yes. See, that makes me think about something I enjoy, which I love teaching you guys lessons. I love talking about Bible stories. Like, we got our Bible right here. There are so many amazing stories in this book. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about, if we talk about the Bible, right? I think most of us know the Bible is a collection of books. The books of the Bible all fit together to make this one big book. But did you guys also know that there's sections of the Bible? See, I bet you did and you don't even realize it, okay? Here's an example. Have you guys ever heard of the Gospels? You guys ever heard that term, the Gospels? Yeah, I've heard of it. So what it is, it's a collection of books that are part of the Bible in the New Testament. And the reason why they're called the Gospels is because they're the books Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, do you know what those four books have in common? All four of those books are about the life of Jesus, all written from different authors. But what's really cool is, is we call them Gospels because Gospel actually means good news. And everything that we read in this book is all about Jesus. And these four books are gonna dive into his life. Now, the book that we're gonna talk about today is Luke. Now, who thinks they know who wrote the book of Luke? I'll wait. That's right, Luke wrote the book of Luke. You guys are so smart. Luke was also very smart. He was a doctor, ooh, Dr. Luke. Uh, and Dr. Luke wrote the Bible, but what's cool is because he was a doctor, he had very great attention to detail, and God used that because the account on Luke's part, even though Luke didn't even know Jesus, didn't even meet Jesus, he met his disciples and he dove into the details. So the story we're gonna talk about today has one very interesting detail that ties in right along with what we're talking about. And so I want you guys to pay attention when you're listening to this story. Now, this story is about 10 guys. All of them were sick. 10 guys? Mm -hmm. 10 sick guys? So you got 10 guys. Wow, that's a lot of sick. All of them are sick. Okay. I want you guys to pay attention to the details. What's uh -huh. special about this story? Got it? Okay, all right. But before we get to that, mm -hmm. let's get to this. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah, I love it when you get yeah, excited. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey there. I'm MC Haggis, and this here is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Say hi to him, Seamus. Hi. Hey, he just did. This part is about gratitude. Letting others know you see how they've helped you, and that's exactly what we're doing. This is our way of saying thank you. <laughs> that's right. Me and Seamus are so excited to say thank you, yeah, <laughs> to everyone. So from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you. 
Ay! Ay! No, ay! Ah! Ay! Ah! Uy! Uh, duh, there's... Oh, there's no point in going any further with this now! Oh, no, you ruined it. You got ruined. Uh, what? Huh? Oh, right. Hey. You know what? Me and Seamus just realized that we can still say thank you. Only we'll start small by thanking one guy. Hank. <laughs> hey, we thank you. No, I think we should lay down a rap about it for Hank. And everyone else, check it! We got sad when we popped balloons and it almost changed our attitude. But now we're laying down some awesome tunes because we can still let others know we see how they've helped us. And that's gratitude. Words. Yeah. Ah, right. Who else could you think we could think? All right. Uh, Han. That's right. <laughs> Who else? Khan! Khan! He's a bad guy. Welcome, RPK. Here we are in the middle of November. And our basic truth today is I need to make the wise choice. Now, this time of year, sometimes you get a little bit irritated, whiny, you complain in a bit. It's a good thing that God is none of those things. It's kind of like he's mmm when I'm blech. You know what I'm talking about? I know you do. All right, come on, get on your feet. Let's sing sweet, sweet love. I'm sweet when I'm really sour. He sees me through Christ. He calls me fresh when I'm really spoiled. What a sweet surprise. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Sweet, sweet love of God Yes, I knew you're my favorite 
job you guys that was a lot of fun okay so our bottom line today it's super simple say thank you why don't you try that right now look at someone that's in the room with you and say thank you good job it's so important for us to say thank you not just to people but to God we're gonna sing this song you guys know it it's called thankful it's all about our great God and how we need to be grateful to him. So there's no moves to this. Again, you can just raise your hands, you can close your eyes, but let's sing it to him. Here we go now. that is our prayer today as we are in this month of thankfulness and we're talking about gratitude we want others to see that we know how they have helped us and oh my goodness we can see how you have helped us every single day how you have been carrying us through these last several months and here we are and we are able to stand and say thank you Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you that you are reigning, that you are Lord, that you are stronger, you are mightier, you are greater than anyone or anything. And it's because of you that we are here. So God, would you just give us a nudge this week? Holy Spirit, would you just whisper into our ear when we need to say thank you to someone? We've been with the people in our house for a long time. And sometimes it's easy to take them for granted and not thank them for the things that they do for us. So God, would you just again remind us to say thank you. And so we close out today saying to you, thank you. We love you. It's in your name that we pray today. Amen.
Wow, German is our hard language. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica. I'm learning how to say thank you in other languages because if I ever travel the globe, I still want to have gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. But saying thank you is really hard as it turns out. For instance, in Armenia, if you were to open the door for me, I'd have to say, Kanorakalution, if I wanted you to know that I was grateful. Or, if you gave me a stick of gum in Mongolia, I'd have to say thank you by saying, Beyalarla. And then, if we were in Spain and you gave me directions to the biblioteca, I'd have no choice but to say, Grace. E ooze. Grease grassy is. Grass gracias! Oh, I actually know that one. <gasps> Nine times out of ten, it seems like we forget to show gratitude when we should. But as you'll see in today's story, saying thank you doesn't have to be that hard. Even in Romania! Mall to a tech. Everybody! Yeah, that seemed right. Devon Shivab. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Outside the village on the border between Samaria and Galilee lived 10 lepers. We didn't know their name or their stories, but we did know at least one of them was a Samaritan, a group that Jewish people distrusted. Call that man Zach. Hi there. I'm sorry. Not allowed to shake your hand. Leprosy was a painful skin disease, and there was no doctors or medicines to treat it. But even worse than the sores were the loneliness. Lepers weren't allowed to be around anyone who were healthy, not even their own families. They had to keep more than a social distance. So if Zach had a wife or kids, probably hadn't seen them in years. Oh, my little boys, all grown up by now, I bet. The 10 lepers' lives seemed hopeless. All they can do was stand back and yell at anybody who passed by. Stay away! Don't come close. But we do need food. If you could just leave some under that willow tree by the creek, uh, we'd be grateful. Then, one day, news reached the lepers of travelers approaching along the border road. Big crowd. Here it's that Jesus fella. The teacher? They say he makes sick people well. You're a Samaritan. <laughs> Why would he care about you? Hey, you know, what have I got to lose? Zach hobbled toward the road, walking stick in hand. The other lepers straggled after them. They can see a crowd now, traveling along the road. People won't like us standing so close. I'm not throwing away my shot. Zach can see faces now. The crowd grouped around a man in the middle. The man had a strong face and kind eyes. Jesus, master, have pity on us. To the leper's surprise, Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road. Master Jesus, please! The crowd around Jesus backed away, whispering. Jesus stood firm as Zach and the lepers dared to limp closer. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. As the lepers neared, Jesus took a long, clear look. Everyone went silent. Zach could hardly breathe. Then Jesus smiled. Go, show yourselves to the priests. Zach gasped. The only way a leper could approach a priest was if that he confirmed that he had been healed. But as Zach glanced down, his heart sank. His knees and his feet were still shriveled and splotchy. His knees still ached. Oh. Jesus moved on and the crowd followed. The lepers stared at each other. Well. That happened. I don't get it. Well, we should go to the priests, like he told us. Uh, I guess it can't hurt. Any more than it already does. Limping, 
The lepers headed out across the field towards the town. They hesitated as they reached the creek. We'll have to wade across. Painfully, the man clambered down the bank. Zach's stick got caught in the twisted root of a willow tree. <laughs> the stick went flying, and he tumbled to the ground. Ouch! Instinctively, he jumped to his feet. How'd you do that? Do what? Just jump up. Zach glanced down again. This time, his feet and his legs were strong and whole, skin clear and healthy. Look, my skin, it's clean. The other man glanced down at their own arms and legs and bodies. I'm all better, woohoo! The lepers laughed and danced till they cried, amazed at what Jesus had done. You gotta get to the priest. Race you. The leper splashed across the creek, hurling towards the town. Zach stopped at the water's edge, and the others ran ahead. I'll get to see my boys again. But even as Zach imagined the joy that would come, a face flashed in his head. Jesus, he's healed me. He's the one who's made me whole. Turning back, Zach hurried toward the road. He ran fast, catching up to Jesus and the crowd as they reached the village. Jesus? Jesus! The crowd parted quickly as Zach headed straight for Jesus. Praise God, I'm well! Zach threw himself down on the dusty road at Jesus' feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Zach lifted his head. Dust mixed with tears of joy. Jesus smiled, but his eyes searched the road behind him. Weren't all ten healed? Where are the other nine? As Zach shook his head, Jesus turned to the crowd. Didn't anyone else return to give praise to God except this outsider? Everyone was silent. It was clear that Zach was the only one. Jesus smiled down at him. Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. Zach leapt to his feet as he hurried to see the priest. He had delayed his chance to see his family by a short time, but it was worth it to see the man who had given him back his life. So, there were 10 guys healed by Jesus. All of them were probably really grateful, but only one of them took the time to actually say it out loud. I think sometimes we're kind of like the nine guys who didn't say anything. It's not that we're not grateful that mom made dinner and washed the dishes. We are grateful. We just assume mom knows that we're grateful. So we forget to say, Thank you. And we're definitely grateful when a teacher takes extra time to help us with schoolwork. We just, I don't know, don't feel comfortable telling her, thank you. And anytime we take a moment to think about all the things God has done for us, our hearts are probably overflowing with gratitude. But we don't actually tell him, thank you. You probably feel grateful all the time. To parents, to teachers, to friends, to God, to the guy who bags your groceries. All you need to do is remind yourself to take two seconds to say the words, thank you. That's the one thing to remember today. Say thank you. Or if you prefer, you could say, arigato, maki, terim, terimaka, si. Thanks everybody. See you next time. What a crazy story. Now we're gonna find out if you guys are paying attention. So here we are, we've got these 10 guys, right? They want a miracle. They wanna be healed. They want their lives to be changed. They might have been a little bit disappointed when Jesus said to go, but there they are on their way and it happens. They get their miracle, all 10 of them, all healed. I'm sure they were ecstatic. They realized that this was life-changing. They were never going to be the same ever, ever again. What an amazing thing. I know, to get the miracle and, and only one comes back to Jesus to thank him? You got it. I'm like, uh, there's a lot we could learn from this story, but the one thing we definitely are gonna learn from this story is 
say thank you. Yeah. You know, it's it's tough. Like we all forget sometimes. You know, sometimes it's just because we forget. Sometimes it's because we're distracted. Uh, I mean, I think about some. I mean, have you ever been, you know, watching a great show and you're totally into that show, and then your mom or dad bring you something, it like a cookie or a cupcake, something amazing, and you're just like, and they're like, hey. What do you say? Oh, oh, thank you, right? We're not being rude, but this is why we have to practice this because it's very easy to forget these things. So whether it's we're busy or we forgot or whatever, there's no excuse. We can practice this because it's important that as Christ followers, when people do nice things for us, that we make sure that we let them know that we appreciate them and we appreciate what they did for us. And that's just by thanking them. So I'm gonna take time to say thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be in a hurry. I'm not gonna keep it inside. Mm -hmm. No, it's like, no, we've got, I'm gonna tell the people who I count on that are there for me every day. I am so thankful, thank you. I mean, yes, because that's what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do that too. I know. Let's, let's both do it. I was gonna say. You guys do it. Let's yeah. all do it. Yeah, perfect, good, okay. You know what? What? Like I say, oftentimes, it's, it's simple, to remember to say thank you, but it's not easy. Because sometimes we are distracted, sometimes we're busy, sometimes we're in a hurry, right? So, what do we do when something isn't easy? We ask God for help. So let's do that now. Let's pray and ask God for help, because He wants us to be grateful. He wants us to say thank you, so certainly He's gonna help us if we ask Him, so let's do that. Okay. Let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for this story. It, it really is hard to believe that um, with something as amazing as what these 10 men experienced, something life-changing, that only one of them took the time to say thank you. And I think what's so important about this story is that we already know that Jesus knows everything. Why is this story included in the Bible? Jesus knew who was grateful and who wasn't, but it's not about what we know, what we don't know, it's about expressing it. And so we want to do a good job of that. We highlight the person, the one out of the 10, that said thank you because that's what we're supposed to do. That is making the wise choice. But God, you know that we can get distracted and you know that sometimes we can even be ungrateful. So Lord, would you help us? Holy Spirit, would you remind us in those moments when someone has done something nice for us, they're, they're, they're kind to us, that we stop and recognize them and just say thank you. Holy Spirit, remind us to look through that lens Who's helping me? Who's being kind? And am I being grateful? Am I letting them know? Am, am, I, am I wanting them to assume? Or am I letting them know how much I appreciate them? And help us let them know. And we thank you for always helping us in all of these things as we grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we should do our verse. Yeah, let's do it. All right, it's a good one. It's found in Psalms. And it's give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalms 136, one. You guys wanna say it with me? Yeah, let's do it together. You guys wanna say it with me? Let's do it. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Psalms 136, one. Hey, and while you're in a thankful mood, thank your parents for like making sure that you could join us for church today. Yeah. Huh? All right, see you next time. And until then, bye guys. Keep saying thank you. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, bye. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Priscilla. Thanks, Jeff. Oh yeah, thank you guys. Thank, thank you all the people. Oh, there's so many people. Thank Thanks, you Amanda, all. for thank lunch. You. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Merci. Yes. Gracias. Yes. Lots of thanks so much. Mm -hmm.